Hello, welcome to Dr. Red Frizzle here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the pancreas and regulation. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to focus on insulin, how insulin is released by but by cells known as beta cells, and then the function of insulin in terms of in terms of how it acts on the target cells and the number of effects that it brings about for the cell. Okay, so first of all, we have our beta cell here. So I'll label this beta cell. Now, um, um, this, this is like B with a squiggle at the bottom. You might think I'm dyslexic by writing that squiggle there, but actually it does have a squiggle there because it's actually a Greek letter for beta, um, second letter in the Greek alphabet, which I don't know if you know, but there you go. So, beta cells, where are they located, first of all, and where does this insulin regulation actually take place initially? Well, it takes place in an organ known as the pancreas. You've probably heard of the pancreas, but you may not know a great deal about its structure. Okay. So, the pancreas is located near the small intestine, and it almost looks like a cauliflower type shape, okay? It's got bits that look almost like fir trees, which is where this, these beta cells are located, okay? So, let's draw you out some structures in, in these pancreas, in, in these pancreatic cells, sorry. Right, okay, that's not a brilliant drawing, but anyway, that this is the pancreas, um, and the beta cells are located in here. So, basically, how does, how is this insulin secreted from these beta cells, and what actually triggers it to be secreted? Well, first of all, it, this only happens if there's a high concentration of glucose in the blood, because the whole idea of insulin regulation is insulin tries to reduce the concentration of glucose in the blood. So this will only happen if there's a high concentration of glucose. So, first of all, what usually happens in these beta cells is these potassium ions are happily diffusing out and then all of a sudden there's what happens is these these potassium ion channels are, are triggered to close and, and once they close this gap sort of disappears and these K plus charges build up inside the cell so obviously what's going to happen is the inside of the cell is going to become really positive and, and, and this whole this whole idea of these, uh, the, this whole idea of these potassium ions building up outside the cell doesn't take place. So then, what can happen is the glucose can move down a concentration gradient inside the cell because what happens with a lot of ions is ions lower the potential. Um, I don't know if you heard of this, but water, water potential is sort of ha is sort of sort of, sort of the general gradient that a that atoms and stuff flow down or molecules, I should have said rather. So glucose actually flows into the cell now that the concentration inside the cell relative to the outside is increased. So in here, this will become like, it's, it, this starts off at about um, plus 30, and it ends up a potential about minus 70. So potential actually lowers because of these high concentration of ions. So then what happens is this glucose diffuses into this cell, um, by the process of facilitate, facilitated diffusion, sorry. Facilitated basically means that glucose uses, uses specialised protein carriers in order to actually get into the cell. Okay? So, I might actually draw some protein carriers. Basically, there's two different types. There's actual carriers that, that almost act like pumps. And what they basically do is they transport large molecules into the cell. But because glucose isn't actually that large, it can use... Like, like something going as a as a, um, uh, as a protein channel as opposed to a protein carrier. There's a subtle difference. You, I'm not really going to focus on that too much in this video. But what you need to know is that this potential buildup triggers this glucose to flow down a concentration gradient via these particular channel proteins into the cell. So once this glucose is sort of transported into the cell, it's then converted into ATP. And ATP, as you should know, it is sort of like the energy. So what happens is, um, this concentration of glucose actually closes these potassium channels. I actually said this the wrong way around, because what I mentioned was I mentioned that this build-up of, of potassium ions actually happens before glucose diffuses into the cell. The reason why, what, why, why this seems to be quite confusing is because actually glucose diffuses in there first, because this concentration is already very negative inside. It starts off negative, because the potassium ions are diffusing out, and then once a lot of them have diffused out, so they build up out here, the glucose moves down a concentration gradient into this cell. Um, so, so once this happens, 
um, this triggers this, these potassium ion channels to close, and then the potential rises. Now, now the glucose is converted into ATP, and then this energy from the ATP is used to close these the, these calcium ion channels. Um, is used to open these potassium ion channels because these actually start off closed, which I haven't drawn this very well. Um, these, potass these calcium ion channels, sorry, they open to allow an influx of calcium ions. Well, when these calcium ions enter the cell, what they do is they trigger vesicles, which are basically, which, which are basically packages that are assembled in, in an organelle known as the Golgi apparatus in this cell. Um, and these vesicles then fuse with this cell membrane and they release a hormone known as insulin. Now, I, I can't stress enough the fact that this only happens if the concentration of glucose outside the cell uh, raises, raises to enough so it can flow down to the concentration gradient inside the cell. I'll, I'll, just sort of, I'll just sort of recap on this potassium ions because I actually got this the wrong way around. So I'll, I'll just say this again just to make sure that you fully understand. Basically, what happens is normally these potassium ions move out and they, the charges build up outside here. So this becomes very positive. So glucose flows from an area high concentration outside to a low concentration inside the cell. I initially thought there was a build-up of potassium ions in here, but this isn't the case initially, because they all move out. So glucose moves in, then that triggers that this um, then that triggers this channel to close, then the, the potassium ion channels can't diffuse out, so they're trapped in here. And then what happens is this change in potential triggers this, ca this calcium ion channel to open, which is usually closed, to cause an influx of calcium ions, which then lead to the secretion of these particular insulin-carrying vesicles into the blood. Now, now, now the insulin is, is, a, is a hormone, which means it's a chemical messenger, and it's known as a primary messenger, which is because it's the first in a series of messengers in order to, that, that actually act to lower the blood glucose um, level. So what happens is that this primary messenger will flow in the blood now, and it will flow down to our target cell down here, so our target cell can be anywhere, it, it, like it can be a muscle cell because muscles respire a lot. Um, it, it, just can, it can be a, a hepatocyte, sorry, which is a, a type of liver cell, um, which is, a, well not a particular type of liver cell, just any liver cell in general is known as a hepatocyte, sort of quite a general term. Um, so anyway, what happens when it gets to these, this target cell? So we have our blood here, so the word blood there, and then we have our target cells here. So this target cell, um, so you're probably wondering, what does insulin do? Well, first of all, it binds to a receptor on this target cell, so I'll draw you a dot as insulin. And then there, there's this particular type of enzyme that's activated, and this enzyme is known as adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase. Now, you probably can't read that because I wrote that very scruffily and very small, but it's A-D-E-N-Y-L-C-Y-C-L-A-S-E. -E. And what, what this adenyl cyclase does is it breaks down ATP inside the cell, it converts that into something known as cyclic AMP. Now this cyclic AMP is what encourages this glucose to move into the cell. Um, so what it does is, is it brings up a number of effects, and one of these effects is to place more glucose channels in this cell membrane, um, which enables glucose obviously to, to flow down its concentration gradient inside these target cells. Um, so once this glucose flows into the target cells, the blood glucose concentration is obviously going to be lowered because it's flowed, it's flowed down a concentration gradient. Um, so now I just want to briefly talk to you about what these three words actually mean. So gluconeogenesis is the, is, is the production of glucose from non-carbohydrate non substrate molecules. So this is anything like fatty acids, anything that can be respired or broken down, if you like, into glucose. Fatty acids and amino acids can be examples of this. Okay. Um, and the next word is glycogenesis. So, so you're probably thinking, well, that's quite obvious, but, but just in case you haven't seen it, glycogen is the first part of this word, which means glycogenesis. Genesis is, is basically a word for formation or, or build-up, if you like. So glycogen... Um, is built up, so glycogen molecules are formed from the glucose molecules that are diffused into the cell. Uh, this is good because glycogen can be stored a lot more compactly than glucose can be stored, because glucose can bloat cells and diffuse by facilitate diffusion into lots of other cells, which is not good because that will take up more space and won't be as compact in storage. Okay, so this is this whole idea of glycogenesis is just converting glucose to glycogen 
inside the cells in order to maintain this concentration gradient because otherwise glucose would bloat the cells so the concentration gradient wouldn't occur and glucose wouldn't continue to flow through these channels. Um, the next word is glycogen olysis. Or anything with lysis in just means breakdown. So this is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. Um, so, so this word doesn't really apply to, to this video. Uh, I've just introduced you to it as a general term because basically what this is used for is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose is actually used to raise the, the amount of glucose in the blood and I'll, I'll discuss that with you in a later video. But for this video I've just been sort of discussing with you obviously how insulin lowers the blood glucose level. So this, this glycogenolysis does not help lower the blood glucose level. Okay. So I hope this video has been helpful and I'm sorry about the mistake I made earlier on. Hope hope this is quite clear in your mind. If not, like, like, like comment on this video and I'll make another video specifically about how this works correctly instead of messing it up like I did in this video. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video and the next video will be on regulation again to do with the pancreas but it will be to do with another hormone known as um, glucagon. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.